What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to Season Gaming Bitcast. We're coming to you a day later today. We got a holiday here in the States, so if you're listening outside of the States, you're wondering why we weren't live on Monday. That is why. And God damn, it's cold here. Wow. That was yeah, nice. I totally forgot about the holiday. Yeah, it's, yep. it's Monday. Yeah, it's Those of us are yeah. usually at the office. Yep. Yeah, it's cold as hell here. <laughs> it is cold. Yeah, it's yeah. like single digits. All I played, shrinking cold. Yeah. It is. I played hockey outside last night, nope. and uh, I think my face about fell off about five minutes into the game. <clears throat> nope. So no thanks. And the Chiefs, the Chiefs did it. Yeah. Going to the Super Bowl, first time in 51 years. That's craziness. It's good nice. for the city. Yes. But, um, yeah, it's my wife's going nuts. Oh, I can yeah. imagine. So if you're not from Kansas City or know the area, the Chiefs are like beloved here, yeah. like more than a normal sports team, and so they're going nuts here. Yeah, the, when the Royals won the World Series, you know, a few years back, they had a big parade downtown or uh, at Union Station. It's and like hundreds of thousands. People of were people. parking on the interstate <laughs> because <laughs> they couldn't find any other parking, so they were just parking on the highway. I, I, it's this is going to be even. Bigger if that if they happen. win it's yeah, going to be win. yeah and then meanwhile I'm from San Francisco so the 49ers made it um, first time they've ever going to play in the playoffs really uh, yeah they said that last night because you know in the playoffs it's NFC AFC so right. they've never played in the Super Bowl so they've never played oh right on so because it's only the Chiefs' second Super Bowl yeah um well, third right third they, the first one they won the first one no, against no. the Vikings in no, Super they, Bowl they, four they, no but they lost the one. Uh, the first Super Bowl it was Green Bay and Kansas City. Oh, the very first. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. And then they won Super Bowl four. So, yep, one one. Anyway. Football. Yeah, football. It's big here. I'm not, I don't even watch it. Yeah. But the fact that it's a local team and my home team is kind of crazy that it worked out that way. So, anyway. Should be cool. It should be cool. All right, let's kick it up here. So, I don't know what you guys are doing or what we're doing. But we're, it's not us. It's no, it's not us. Just yeah. some kind of luck of the draw thing. But we are seeing a huge number of new subscribers, a huge number of new watchers, listeners. So just want to thank you, um, mm-hmm. sincerely. Uh, it's really cool. It, it gets us excited, gets us pumped about doing you know more and, and improving. Mm-hmm. And um, no, just really appreciate it. So if you are a new a new listener, new watcher, welcome. Um, as always, you know, we're, we're working on new things. We're open to suggestions. I just want to remind people that two things we do in a weekly poll now. So if you follow Season Gaming on Twitter, we're doing a weekly poll that we're going to talk about every week to kick off the episode. We're about to get to this week's. And then also, uh, we want to do reader suggestions or questions as well. So if you have a question you'd like to see us talk about um, anything, uh, well, gaming related, not anything. Yeah. Or football. Football, yeah. hockey. Yeah. I'm open to that too. Mm-hmm. Cars. Yeah. Uh, we're getting kind of broad now. Yeah. yeah. All right. Back it down to gaming. Um, but just uh, you can send that to bitcast at seasongaming.com, and we check in with that every week too. So feel free to, to just give us a shout. But anyway, our weekly poll this week, we talked about uh, probably what was the biggest news. We alluded to it last week because there was a rumor of it, and then sure enough, the day after we released BitCast, Sony formally announced that they're not going to be at E3 again this year, which um, you know came as quite a big surprise primarily because it's a console launch year and frankly we haven't seen a PlayStation or Xbox or Nintendo console launch for as long as I can remember since at least the 90s no. uh, without kind of an E3 presence. I mean E3 is the place where you announce those things and, and show them off and release the price point and everything. So. Sony has some type of qualm with the ESA. Uh, we've seen a whole lot of opinions on this, ranging from you know uh, uh, good conversation points all the way to the absurd, as usual. But our poll was really, are you personally disappointed that PlayStation will not be at E3 formally? And so 56% said yes, definitely. 30% said no, not at all, which I don't know why. And then 13% said no, but they expect some sort of replacement show, which is kind of where I am. I'm disappointed they're not going to be there because I'm going to be there obviously and I like having them on the show floor. Right. Um, but I really hope that they get in line with like EA or Microsoft where they do something during E3. They may not just be in the physical convention center. Right. Well, I mean, in, they could do a direct, or not direct, but what do they do? The PSX? You know, I mean, th- there's there's rumors of something happening as soon as next month, right? Who knows? Uh, the reveal is, even David Jaffe came out and said the reveal is happening in less than four weeks. Okay, so, so yeah, it's supposed to be February. So we'll, we'll probably see the hardware before then. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, E3, you know, I've always wanted to go, but um, it's one of those things where it's like, 
I want it. I want it all. I want the whole experience. <laughs> you know, I want to see Xbox. I want to see Sony. You know, I, I don't understand why it's so hard to give fans that kind of experience. That's, like that's Xbox where I am. Does, you that's know? where I am. I, I think that's you know, and Nintendo it maybe don't have to do it, and Sony probably doesn't either. Really, Xbox doesn't, for that matter. I just wish that, you know, they, they thought about it a little bit more, you know, and, and that's all it is. It's fan service, you know, yeah. it's something for the fans, you know, for those, for those diehard guys that are going and get to see, you know, their favorite developers, their favorite video games, you know, whatever it is, you know, just, it's not, it's not that hard, <laughs> you know, it just seems like, you know, okay, we're just going to do our own thing and to hell with you guys, you know, this is what you're getting. It, you it's know? a weird message, because then they come out and say, we are going to attend hundreds, which I found really bizarre, yeah, of weird. consumer shows throughout the year, and I'm like, it's not what people want. No. I mean, that's cool, but to your point, people want that PSX, you yeah. know, where, like XO, right? and Sony ran PSX, and I talked about this in the video I just posted last week, but Sony ran PSX for four years straight, and in 2018, <clears throat> they canceled it, because Sean Layden said, we don't have anything to show that you don't already right. know. And then they said they weren't at E3 2019, which they weren't, obviously. But everyone's like, all right, PSX will be back in 2019. They'll get back to the fans. They made sure PS5, all this stuff never mm -hmm. never happened. And then now they've announced they're not going to E3. Yeah. And it's just like, you guys made $17 billion last year in revenue. Yeah. Now, I know Sony, as an overall company, is kind of hurting, and PlayStation's propping them up, which is a whole different discussion. But come on, guys. Do something for the fans. If, if, they, if we go through summer past E3... And they haven't done something more than just a live stream. You know, if they right. haven't done something to accommodate physical presence for fans, I'm going to be really disappointed. I, I mean, I, I guess their thought is, you know, well, here's the PS5. This is for the fans. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> just just come on. Give well, us, you know... And that, well, who's the new guy? The Herman? Herman Holst. Holst? Well, yeah. he's head of Worldwide Studios. Okay. So he's head of development. Jim Ryan's the head yeah, of, Ryan's of PlayStation. So, but... <laughs> You know, Hulse, he seems like he could get in there and maybe be like, hey, guys, let's give the fans a little bit Seriously. of something. It's just, it's just a little bit. You know, let's take a little bit out of our, you know, gigantic wallets and, you know. They got those Costanza wallets. <laughs> right. Just take exactly. a couple bills out. That's all you got to do. Just give me a little bit of something. I'd go for sure. But as it is, kiss my butt. Yeah, even if it's a, even if it's a PSX in May. You know what I mean? Somewhere right. different, or July after yeah, E3, just in Texas or something crazy. You know, just somewhere, just do something. No oh, man. So it's kind of weird to me. I, I I made the point that yeah, and people kept saying, "Well, Sony doesn't need E3." N nobody needs no, E3. Nobody That's needs not it. the point. No, you don't need it uh, in today's environment. You know, everyone knows a live stream, YouTube, social media. You can spread a message instantly. Yeah. PlayStation could post on Twitter right now just a picture, a single picture with no words yep. of the console, and that would be spread across the world in 20 minutes. Yep. You know what I mean? It, you don't need it, but to your, to every, I think our point is, do it for the damn fans. Do it for the fans. Yeah, I was really hoping to be back in the convention center because what happens? There's the West Hall, East Hall, and you've got um, big publishers. You got Ubisoft and, and Banco Namkai, Bandai Namco. I don't know how I mix that one up. Um, and all those in the hall, right? And then you have Nintendo, and Nintendo was with PlayStation uh, in 2018. Okay. So that, that hall was just fantastic, right? I mean, there was just stuff everywhere. Um, last year, you definitely felt, even though there were more fans, because last year was how they, you know, E3 is ramping the fan presence up, mm -hmm. even more so this year, um, you felt the, the lack of PlayStation, because you had Nintendo, and their booth is always huge and packed, right? But then you had kind of all these smaller companies doing things instead of this big PlayStation booth. Right. So it's just, it's a shame. I, I really thought they were going to be there. I would have loved to got my hands on the DualShock 5, um, you know, even play some PS5 games. That's what it's all about. Yep. Because yep. then you get the hands-on experience, and people like us and much bigger outlets will report on that, right? That's what it's all about. Anyway. Damn it, Sony. <laughs> So let us know what you think. You know, I mean, that's that's kind of our opinion. Again, not it's not needed, but come on, do something for the fans. Get it together. So, all right, a lot of news outside of that this week, though. Um, we got delays all over the place. We got development news. You know, the year's definitely kicking into gear. So, one of the more interesting things that came out this year, and this was courtesy of Video Game Chronicle. Uh, I give them credit because this was an exclusive uh, report out of Ubisoft. But Ubisoft has this internal team called the editorial team. 
and it's about 100 people or so made up of designers and programmers and producers. And what they do is they shape Ubisoft's lineup. So they look at all the IPs and they say, okay, this is the direction they need to go. They need to be more online capable and they need to have open worlds and they need to do this and this and this and this. Mm -hmm. And that has led to, you know, we're not the only ones that say these games feel kind of Ubisoft-y, right? Yeah. You know, like oh, it, sure. it's almost like a, a, a pattern of all these games feeling similar. You know, Bert used to joke about that quite oh, a yeah. lot. And... Uh, so, long story short, um, Eves, uh, the CEO, kind of came down and said, okay, we need to make some changes here, and the head of, um, God, I didn't write it down here, but we have an article on our site on it, but the head of this team is still going to be the same head, but they're making changes. They're putting new VPs under him, and these VPs are being assigned IPs, so, in, you know, like Assassin's Creed and Skull and Bones and For Honor and all these individual things. And they're going to have basically new ways to look at these IPs that um, up the quality, so if they need more development time or resources, but also the focus is making them feel individual. And the report said that several titles, including a major title, were either put on hold or are being completely revamped based on what they were going to be shown. And so I want to talk about this because I've had a lot of people reaching out to us saying, hey, where is Skull and Bones? Where's Roller Champions? Where are these other games that we saw? <laughs> yeah, one person. One person, Roller <laughs> Champions. Yeah, Skull and Bones was, Bones was a little higher. I totally forgot about that one. Right, and then you had last year, and you know, you had the delays with Watch Dogs Legion and Gods and Monsters and, you know, all this stuff, and uh, it just kind of makes sense. We played Skull and Bones at E3 2018. Wow. So it's coming yeah. up on two years, and we haven't seen that game, so it wouldn't surprise me. But, funny enough, when we saw it, and Bert and I took footage of it, you can find on our channel... Um, we said, this looks cool, it looks real Ubisoft because <laughs> it looked like just Black Flag right. in pirate theme, you know? And so it wouldn't surprise me if they're, they're really taking time to revamp these games. So in theory, this is good news. Eh, I'm kind of, I'm, 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 I'm getting to the point now in my old age that I, <laughs> I, I kind of like, it's like a warm glove, you know? I know what I'm going to expect when I come into When you go to a Ubisoft screen. game? Right. right now, okay. It's like, yeah, this, I'm going to have towers, you know, for sure. Going to have some kind of, you know, kind of... <laughs> Dumbed down, you know, RPG mechanics. Sure, I'm you gonna know. jump into a pile of hay from right. a mile up. I'll be exactly. fine. Exactly. Yeah, I'll be fine. I, you know what you, what's gonna happen. You know, between like Far Cry or uh, that's another example, yeah. right? Far yeah, Cry. I mean, exactly. I mean, that's basically first person Assassin's Creed. In, you, know, <laughs> you know, for the most part. But it, it's it's I'm, I'm okay with this. Okay. But the problem is, you know, and we'll kind of talk about this later in the delays, is that it just seems like. We're getting all these games, like, okay, this is coming out, this is coming out, this is coming out. Nope, now we're delaying everything. Yeah. And we're revamping stuff that probably doesn't need to be revamped. When Assassin's Creed, uh, it's one of my favorite Yeah, uh, I think franchises. most people, right? Yeah. yeah. So when 3 came out, yep. I about lost my crap. Because while it was still Ubisoft-y, they completely changed like all the, the mechanics. It for, wasn't received too oh, well. Oh, it was terrible. Yeah, I was, didn't play it. Oh, it was bad. Bad, bad news, and I hate. It, and it actually made me not even play Black Flag because I, I, I just couldn't. Have you ever played Black Flag? Yeah, I played. Oh, some. it's good. Yeah, I'm sure it is. <laughs> I, I played maybe half, and I just like this is too much like three. But you know, it, it's fine. But you know, eventually you have to release something. You know, I mean, we're Splinter Cell, Ubisoft. That was oh never God. super Ubisofty, huh. you know. That was something that was completely not Ubisofty, <laughs> but you refused to let it, you know, come out and you know work on it. I wonder, so. wonder if that has been in development and it was going down that pattern of being too much like the other games, and now <laughs> like, they're yeah. like, oh, like Sam what's Fisher going has to on? open up all these towers and, <laughs> uh, <laughs> to unlock his night vision. You had to do some missions, you know, some escort missions. Maybe, maybe. Oh boy, gosh, roller champions. Roller Champion. I was actually excited. I love those small competitive games. It's like, uh, it was looking like um, Rocket League. Yeah, it looked like Rocket League. Yeah. But, so. Yeah, okay. So, so we'll see. Ubisoft's booth at E3 is one of the biggest and usually one of the best. They have a huge booth. They have a stage presence. They have all this stuff. So assuming they do that again this year, uh be interesting to see what they're showing off. Um, you have <laughs> to think Assassin's Creed is going to be there, right? Yeah, probably um, Legion. Yes. Yeah, Legion will probably be there again. Legion was there last year, and that's we've got footage of that. Um, I still got the pig mask sitting in my closet over there that they mm -hmm. gave us. Sexy. <laughs> Sexy. I'll put that on one of these episodes. People are like, what the hell is that? Anyway. All right, so back to PlayStation for a second. Um, some, uh, some of the people we like to poke fun of, you know, the fanboys, were losing their shit over this one. 
And that is that, you know, as we've been talking about for a while now, the industry's changing. It's not about console sales and exclusives like it used to be. And PlayStation is starting to move some of their big games to PC. So Horizon Zero Dawn going to PC at some point. And the rumor actually that just came out uh, either last night or this morning is that Dreams as well. Um, you know, Dreams from Media Molecule, which we've talked about a lot, is uh, going to be to PC as well. Now, there was another rumor, The Last of Us 2 going to PC. I think that was put up by one of those sites, I won't name names, um, that just wants to get hits while this topic is hot. Yeah. And so it's probably working for them, but we're not reporting that because it's most likely bullshit. Yep. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, the, the matter of fact here is that, you know, with Jim Ryan is making some big changes. Whether you agree with them or not, they're going to happen. And, uh, you know, you're going to see PlayStation games on PC. Now, I think the method at which these will arrive on PC may be a little different than Microsoft, right? Uh, Microsoft is just able to support the PC and Xbox platform simultaneously because mm-hmm. it all runs on Windows and it's just their ecosystem. But with, uh, with PlayStation, yeah, I think you're going to see this push into PS, PS Now, excuse me, to try and get those numbers up. You gotta pump those number the rookie numbers right now. You gotta pump them up. Mm. Um, so with God of War titles like that go into PS now, you'll get some PC players on there as well. But gonna be interesting to see this. Yeah. Um, here's the thing: until they come out and they're doing like day and date with stuff, mm-hmm. like you said, you know, then this this isn't a really a big deal. I mean, it's a big deal for people that haven't played Horizon Zero Dawn and waiting for it on the PC. You know, but it's what three years old now. Yes. You know, it's almost like they kind of milked everything they had out of yeah. it, and it's like, hey, here yeah. you go. We'll throw it on there now. You know, Dreams pretty much lends itself to a perfect. PC. I mean, yeah. it's like the perfect game for it. I am shocked that it wasn't, you know, you know, going to come out just day and date with that, too, because it's, it's just it's perfect for that. Um, but, I mean, yeah, you're, you're right. This is the way the industry is going. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you want to get more people in. You know, I don't think, you know, Horizon Zero Dawn is going to, you know, make them a ton of money coming to the PC, you know, just because it's it's such an old IP. But what that does do is if, you know, let's say it comes out here in a few months, right? You mm-hmm. get the PC players and I'm like, oh, this is actually a really good game. Then guess what? PS5 comes out. We just announced Horizon Zero Dawn 2. Yes. I'm going to go buy a PlayStation yep. because I want to go buy it. So it, it's got, you know, it's got some potential uh-huh. to, you know, pull people into PlayStation's ecosystem. Exactly. You know, so that's that's actually a pretty good deal. But, you know, I'm fine with it. You know, it's it's more stuff for more people being able to play everything. You know, that's, that's what we want, man. Yeah. You know? Doesn't make any sense. To be, no. to, it doesn't make any sense to be, uh, you know, upset about this. No. Oh. They're, they're, it's great games going to more people. People are upset about this? Oh, God, they're upset about it. Oh. So, they, the dumb people. Ah, uh, yeah. Not, 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 not our people. Yeah. Okay. Those people. Oh, okay. I see why. Yeah. Okay, I'm not, I'm reading, I'm what like, do you mean, oh. those people? Yeah, those. Yeah. Well, we just lost all our new stuff. Uh, they know who we're talking about. Yeah. We're all family here. It's crazy. All right. We got delays. We got delays everywhere. Uh, uh, it's the nature of game development nowadays, I'm afraid. Um, the big one, obviously, and part of the reason I'm wearing this shirt today, Cyberpunk pushed back to September 17th. So... I think all of us were planning to clear our calendars in April and to really, you know, just focus on Cyberpunk, but now it's all the way back to September 17th. The weird thing about this delay is there was an uh, interview with one of the developers or producers at, at CD Projekt Red that our uh, non-friends at Kotaku reported that um, they said that crunch is likely to increase, which is kind of strange. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you think you give them three more months or what have you, whatever that is, five more months, um, but that just... There's, even with the five-month delay, they're still going to be crunching like crazy to get this game done. I think it just shows you how probably big it is and detailed it is, and we know how CD Projekt Red you know, puts into their games when you look at Witcher 3. We've talked about endlessly. But um, I don't know. I, I, the delay doesn't upset me. You know, I was looking forward to, to playing it in April, but, I mean, a better game's a better game, and I want Cyberpunk to be the best it is. Many people, of course, are saying now, damn it, why didn't you just delay it till November and let it release on... PS5 and uh, Series X, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but hey, I, I some people are saying they're going to wait. There's no way I have that kind of willpower. There's no. no way I can wait a month and a half or two months to play that game. No, there's zero chance. <laughs> zero chance. Now this it, this upsets me because it just seems like now you know we're getting into this mindset where it's like you know people are like, oh, it's okay. You know, no worries. You know, it's a better game. You know, take as much time as you want. That's fine. But now, like, <laughs> I think the devs are like, 
hey, these guys are all right with this. Let's just delay everything <laughs> possible. So, like, everything's getting delayed. So, what it came out 17th. There's another game that comes out the 7th of September that got delayed until September. I can't remember what it was. Um, but they're probably crapping their pants now. Oh, it was. Um, oh, keep talking. Yeah. It'll come so, away. then you've got, you know, on here we got Final Fantasy VII Remake delayed till April. Iron Man VR delayed was, until Oh, my May. God. It's right at the tip of my tongue. Yeah. I actually sent you a message about it. I yeah, think. we were talking about it. Yeah. Because we were saying that, oh, God, now they're mad, right? They're like. We yeah. delayed to September to get out of the way, and now the bomb is going to drop right next to us. Yeah, right, right, uh, right after us. So I guess it's good. It's coming out a little bit after. Yeah, check that thing. Yeah, go. But ahead. The, the problem is, you know, it's killing me. This, it's fine. I guess you're going to increase crunch. Avengers. Avengers. That's, no, that's right. I don't even have to look it up. It popped in my head. Yeah, Avengers delayed till you know September. It's just getting super annoying as a gamer that wants to play some new games because really, you know, aside from like Doom. That's coming out yeah. here shortly. I, I, there's not a in The Last of Us, obviously, you know. But you're talking big, giant gaps in time here, you know. And it, it's the it's, first quarter suddenly got empty. It's completely yeah, empty. yeah, other than Doom, you know, yeah, so, which is the end of the first quarter. And you know, hey, it's your game. You do what you want. It doesn't mean I have to be happy about it, <laughs> you know. You know, whatever. You know, I'm gonna play it when it comes out. It doesn't really matter. I'm still not super excited that I gotta wait, you know, six, seven, eight more months now to play the game that you know. I've been looking forward to the most. Could be the game of the generation. Right. Yeah. At the very end of the generation. At this comes literally out the tail man. end. Man. <laughs> That's going to be real loud That's in the mic. That's going to be super loud in the mic. I apologize. <laughs> I'll see I'm, if, I'm super mad I'll about see if I can bunker. cut that one down. No, just let it go. <laughs> now we've talked about it. CD Projekt Red needs to hear that. Yes. You need to hear that, CD Projekt. Yeah, whatever. I'm so mad. I'm so mad. So we've got... <laughs> So a couple others is Final Fantasy VII Remake 2, which delayed uh, just a little bit until April 10th, and then Iron Man VR delayed until May 15th, which, again, is right next to Last of Us 2. Yeah. Now. Um, but I, I think... a dumb move. <laughs> but I think what I would say is stop putting dates on these games. Yeah. Stop putting dates until you are literally in in the part of the development cycle and I deal in application development not game development but there is that part of the cycle where you're in final UAT what they call UAT right user acceptance testing where you're your end user testing meaning the products complete you're you're smashing bugs right mm -hmm. and you're at a point where you all your show what they call show stopping bugs are squashed and now you're just polishing right mm -hmm. wait till you get to that point and then set your date yeah, okay. I think the problem is because of uh, investors, publicly traded companies, publishers, right? You have to set a date for distribution and all. there's all these other reasons why you need a date to plan for, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're going to keep missing the date, what does it matter anyway? Right, it doesn't matter. So set a date that actually makes sense. Yeah. So. You're going to have to not buy that stupid third Ferrari, I guess, you know, <laughs> you pieces of garbage. Gosh! I'm so your, game, your game's getting canceled. Which one? You're not getting a copy now. They're listening, and it's fine. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna <laughs> freaking download it and illegally <laughs> and get it. You sons of bitches. All right. So uh, I, I promise you, this won't be the last of the delays this year. We're gonna see more. It's gonna be constant. I just hope that these developers start getting better about planning these things. Yeah. Um, if Halo gets delayed, I'm gonna burn this whole motherfucker down. Excuse right. my language. Let's, no, don't excuse anybody. <laughs> That's the thing, you know. Everybody's so you know they're like, oh, we can just do whatever we want. No. No, there's you no know, way. There's not people, a chance. Halo. Well, they're like, oh yeah, it's okay. I understand. You know, we got you know you're getting, you're getting a better game. It's gonna be more. Pro Shut up. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, you you want that? You want it now? It's already been delayed once. Oh, it's been delayed multiple times. But, yeah. th but then I reminded people Witcher 3 was delayed for like a, a year and a half from the original date. It got delayed three times. Yeah. So, and, yeah. and look what we got. Yeah, so that's fine. I, mean, stay I, know, I know it's going to be great. I know it's going to be great. I just, it's still, it's, now I have nothing to it's play. It's just disappointing. That's it's going to be a lot of Red Dead Online for a long time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's not a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, console streaming. So, need to talk about this but also put some clarity to it because people seem to be confused so xbox announced this week they're rolling out the console streaming portion of their x cloud offering to yeah uh -huh. Uh -huh. sorry that was a weird my computer screen just went dead i don't know if we were even still recording sure it looks that way looks like it's real recording all right all right we're gonna keep i think we're gonna keep rolling sure okay let's hope yeah all right Console streaming. So, 
rolling out worldwide to all Xbox One markets. Now, what this is, this is not xCloud. This is the console streaming portion of this, and there are requirements to be involved in this. So you have to be in the, your console has to be in the Xbox preview program. So, you know, where you sign your console up to get the updates ahead of time. And you, your account, has to be on the Xbox Insider program. When, our, when we put this news out on Season Gaming, got a lot of replies like, it's not available to me, I thought you said it was available to everyone. And it's like, well, you need to checklist these things. Mm -hmm. Which, of course, we put in the article, but people don't read. Um, Damn it. <laughs> so anyway. Maybe they can't read. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people in uh, Canada, Germany, other you know people that follow us and I interact with are uh, trying this out now for the first time and uh, loving it. So good news here. And it, it's cool that they're rolling this out so early. It's really part of Xbox's strategy throughout 2020 to really test this because they want xCloud to be a integral part of uh, the new Series X launch, you know, later in the year. Yeah. So pretty cool. Cool. You've been using it for a while. I, I have been. I, I started using it for a while, and then I just stopped using it. So there's really <laughs> no point in having. You know, if you're sitting there at your house, yeah. you're not going to play on your phone. And I've tried it a couple different places. Who has been using it? Are my kids? They got into it and. Uh, they got it on their tablets, so they go over to say my in-laws or something, and they'll be sitting there with their controller. Okay. And playing. You know, they they're, they're not on the uh, console preview yet. Um, they're just on the X Cloud stuff. Yeah, well, you know. to us because that's right. available. Right. So I mean, but they're you know, it's a nice supplement for sure, um, and it works pretty well for the most part. Can't really complain about it. Yeah, I saw uh, some of our friends, Archimedes, uh, Nick was using it. I think Alden was using it. Alden's yep. that guy who'll be sitting in his own no, house on his phone no, playing. Like, he's, what are yeah, you doing? He's he's laying in his bed. Today, <laughs> for sure. yeah. He would he would have every hand everything would be handheld for Alden if he could. <laughs> well, you're 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 strange, Alden. Um, <laughs> so we had a Smash Direct this week as well. This is a Nintendo Direct just for Smash Brothers. Uh, we know there's millions and millions of people who still play this. Your kids still playing this? Mm, Smash? Sometimes a little bit. Yep. So, we're not the biggest Smash players, but give you the update here. So, Byleth from Fire Emblem uh, is the new character that's being introduced. And I saw a lot of people getting upset about this because there's too many, Hilarious. I guess, too much focus on Fire Emblem for Smash. They wanted, like, something really, truly different. Um, but that's coming. You've got five new costumes for the Mii Fighter, uh, including Cuphead, which I think was the biggest surprise. The Rabbit, Altair from uh, Assassin's Creed, and then Mega Man as well. So, that's pretty cool. And they're introducing a new pass later this month. It's going to be available on January 28th. And they promise to introduce six more, what they're calling expansions, but it's really fighters, by the end of 2021. Not 2020, 2021. You so, heard. yeah, it's kind of crazy. But they've got a long-term plan for support here. And, uh, you know, I saw people mix on it. Some people love it. Some people, you know, the usual. But, um, I mean, cool if you like Smash Brothers. I just want to make sure we mention it because I know there's a lot of people out there that love it. Yeah. Um, Blyth is or or by by whatever Lyth. her name is, his name, both names, they're both a yeah, it's a, it's a yeah, exactly, uh, the duo, the duo. I mean, it's a weird choice, I guess, but you know, as long as the next six aren't probably Fire Emblem, you'd probably be all right. <laughs> you know? And of course, the meme started where it was like six more Fire Emblem, you know, yeah, people saying all kinds of stuff. But anyway, if you like Smash Brothers, at least you're getting continual updates at least for the next almost two years. So mm -hmm. that's impressive as it is. PUBG fans, uh, in fact, I played for the first time the other night. Um, we did not do well. But, uh, you know, that game's fun as ever and uh, still getting their updates. Season 6 kicks off here. Let's see, as you're listening to this, it should be almost getting ready to roll out for PC. Rolls out on the 23rd for PC, a week later on the 30th for PS4 and Xbox. And Season 6 introduces the fifth map, which is Karakin. It's the same size as Sandhawk, so it's the 4x4 map design, but instead of 100 players, it's 64 players, more like um, Apex. So it could be really interesting, but the, the most intriguing part of the update is that it's going to have destructible buildings, which is something we haven't seen in PUBG or many games outside of Battlefield. So really interested to see how they do that. I mean, it's kind of strange because the engine for PUBG is not the best, mm -hmm. and to do destructibility on buildings can be a challenge, so... I'm getting ready to see how this is going to run if you destroy a building and it drops down to like 10 frames a second or what i don't know but 
um, you know, it is what it is. I'm, I'm excited to see what they do with it. It comes apart in like a maximum of six pieces. <laughs> so it's, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> Looks like the big yeah. Lego walls. Check out how destructible uh, that is. Yeah, yeah, it just kind of falls out like a cartoon. Hilarious. <laughs> yeah, well. So we'll see. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. And I do like, you know, one thing I love about PUBG is that they're adding maps. You know, they now have five uh, Battle Royale maps, unlike Fortnite, unlike Apex, where they just do variations of the map. I know some people really like that. I'm not a big fan. I like having different maps to play with different ecosystems and just layouts and everything. So, pretty cool. Mm. A couple other things uh, to get excited about. So, Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, Baldur's Gate, if you're an old school gamer like us, you remember the significance of Baldur's Gate, one of the most kind of iconic Western RPGs of all time. Um, especially from a PC perspective. And Larian Studios, you know, Divinity Original Sin creators, have taken over the Baldur's Gate franchise, which just seems like a match made in no, heaven. I mean, good God. I mean, Divinity Original Sin 2 won all sorts of awards, including Game of the Year and many outlets. So to give them Baldur's Gate um, is just, you know, I know there's people that are hugely excited for this, me included. So they uh, were teasing it on Twitter the other day. There's something being teased for February 27th, so that's about a month away, a little over a month away. Now, we don't, we don't think that's the release date. Don't get too excited, but hopefully it's kind of a full breakdown of what they're going to be doing for Baldur's Gate 3. So. Yeah, it's still Google Stadia exclusive, isn't it, for now? Isn't that, isn't that right? Isn't that, oh, I thought like, you were joking. No, they announced it for Stadia and for the PC, and that's it. Come on now. I, I, I never saw it announced for Xbox. Well... So, if it's like Divinity, right, it'll right. be PC and then come to consoles later right. because they have to overhaul that kind of point-and-click right. mechanic. Right, it'll come on, it'll come for Stadia and PC day one. So, the, the, That's play, what, the player base is going to be yes. like 4.8 million and, and three, 932. Three, 12. <laughs> That's what it's going to be. Because that, I remember that being the big thing when, when the Stadia had their I launch not, thing. I remember not. seeing that and I was just like... Oh man, Baldur's Gate! I gotta get a Stadia for this. Stop it! You know, but I didn't. So, <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I don't think anybody did. No, I mean, um, I played on PC. I'll yeah, play this will be yeah, this will be hundred percent day one PC. Wow, hundred percent. I think we'll look through that. I don't want to give you like super false information, but I do remember that. And for God's sakes, please just come to Xbox. Well, maybe Audition. that's one of the things we're gonna hear on February twenty seventh. Is what their console support plans are, or support pla- platform support plans are. Yeah, hopefully. It'd be like. Um, so it's PC. I know we said previously about Stadia, but uh, we're working on PS4 and Xbox, and uh, Stadia will take the back burner. Jeez. I think people are still playing that thing. It's are like, they? I don't know. <laughs> oh, uh, Stadia. It's, it's, become a, it's become a running joke at this point. Especially, yeah. did you see the people trolling the Stadia Twitter account? Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. Someone uh, said, when is NAC 5 coming to Stadia? And the response was like, we yeah. don't know, have any information on NAC 5 at the moment, but stay tuned. Yeah, like Superman 64. <laughs> this is like, this is fantastic. Come on, uh, guys. Just stop. Even your social media is not up to date. You, you can't do that in today's world. Apparently okay. you can. Meanwhile, Xbox Game Pass's Twitter account is just, they're on, whoever runs that account deserves a raise. Man, he is on fire. Or she. Damn mind. He or she is on fire. Or really? they. Anyway, all right, one more. <laughs> so going back. Stadia. <laughs> Stadia. Going back to Doom for a second. Doom Eternal. We got an amazing new trailer this week. You know, we're less than two months, I think, or right around two months from the game launching. Got some new fan art. This game just looks like it's going to be. An absolute bas- bast, yes, a bast to play. A blast to play, bast. just like the Doom reboot was. I cannot wait for this. Um, this is... This is it. Yeah, I didn't, I got no, it's all we got in the first quarter yeah. now anyway, so it's yeah, I'll be ready this. to go. And Kingdom Hearts 3. Stop uh, it. Whatever that's called. DLC. Yep. Yep. Where's Bird? There's that too. <laughs> Where's Bird? <laughs> Our, ki- our <laughs> Kingdom Hearts guy is gone. <laughs> our, our insight into Kingdom Hearts yeah. is now zero. Yep. I'm going to be honest with you. I we are nothing. we we aren't that that podcast for you. Sorry. Nope. Just do. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to be playing it. It's going to be awesome. Can't it's wait. It's going to be short. That's my that's my biggest thing. It's, it's not going to take very long to beat that thing. I don't so, know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, the Doom reboot wasn't super long, right? But there, the one thing I liked about it was how they they designed the levels almost like a. Um, 
arcane studios game where you could go you could find a whole bunch of different secrets and paths and there were right. the doom guys you could find i got every doom guy in the thing because i love hunting the, you know me i love hunting yeah. that stuff down so you can get more time if you just race and gun everything down i'm sure it'll be a 10 hour game but i'm sure i'll probably get like 30 out of it yeah you know we'll yeah, see it's fine could be longer we don't know we don't know yeah we don't know anything <laughs> But anyway, that's the news for this week. Why don't we talk about some of the things we're, we're currently planning. And like we said, not playing too much again. This has been kind of a shallow section over the past few big casts. But it's been, you know, it's a lot of stuff happening, like in real life. And it's just, you just don't get, I don't have the time anymore. And when I do, it's like Red Dead Online. Yeah, Red Dead Online. You I think know. we're both still playing that. I'm, yeah, I actually, I, I, I missed a day. Oh, I lost no. my, Killed it. Yeah, killed my streak. It was like a, a 30-something days. So when I missed the day, I decided I'm gonna play something else. Oh! So I started Jurassic World Ugh. Evolution. Yep. The game is awesome. I've heard it's really good. Yeah. Gosh, I mean, I, I started playing it a long time ago. I was just like, eh. But it, it's here, here's the thing about like these world builders and these sim builders and stuff. A lot of times they make it overcomplicated. I was you just know, gonna like, ask like you that. Like city skylines yeah. and stuff. It's like so in depth. Yep. You know, I'm just like, this is ridiculous. I started I Skylines, and I was like, I appreciate the depth, but I, I, I can't do this. No, there's no way. Uh, I'd have to invest way too much time to be good at this. Yeah, so Jurassic World does does it while still keeping it simple. Okay. You know, now there's several different kinds of dinosaurs. I mean, they, they have a, you know, but it's 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 there's like it seems like there's a, a finite amount of stuff okay. that you can do. And, you know, it'll put you on, like, different islands as you okay. go through it. Start on the one. Island Nubar? That's the... Sandbox, actually. <laughs> Isla Nubar. Isla. Isla Nubar, or whatever the hell it's called. But yeah, they start you on one, and it's like, okay, this is where you're, this is kind of like your tutorial island. Okay. You know, get your stuff, get your shit together here, man. <laughs> and, you know, build whatever, you know. So you do that, then they move you on to another island. Okay. Which might have a different challenge to it. Like, okay, this one's got storms that come in. Oh. Okay, okay. so you got to figure out, you know, you've got a few extra things to help you with that, you know. And you know, the whole time you're kind of researching, and all that stuff kind of happens in the background, you know, and you just kind of hit a button or two. There, there are some problems I have with it, like the, there's no way to queue stuff up, which to me would be oh, like it certain like hatching dinosaurs. Yes, you can do is you but know, like building way. stuff, right, or research or something like that. Okay. You have, like every time the research starts, you got to just get back to the research tab and then do it again. But okay. you know that that's that would help out quite a bit. Um, then I'll move you to another island where maybe, you know. Everything's gone crazy, or it's bankrupt. You yeah. know, so there's different challenges on each one, and they make it for really interesting. And then you get to the last area, and it's like the original uh, movie, where uh, everything is, you know, like everything's wild. You oh, know, like, okay. So you got, you got to kind of rein everybody in. Okay. You know, and stuff like that. So it's actually really, really good. I've had a really good time with it. You playing it on? Uh, what are you playing it on? Xbox. Xbox. Is it Game Pass or you'd buy it? No, it's free right now. What? Go get it. Free? It's Games of Gold, man. Oh, I don't pay attention to Games of Gold anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's free. Damn. Okay. Go get it. That's actually a pretty good title to be free. Yeah, it is. Damn. Yeah. I, I'm not sure. I think it is. I mean, I, mean, I know it is because my son got it. I just don't know how long it goes. Yeah, I'm, I better log on and do that. Well, there you go. Yep. Go little, uh, FYI, get it. if you're like me and just been paying attention to Game Pass and forgot about Games with Gold, yep. I don't even look at it anymore. You've got some DLCs with it where, like, they, you know, Jurassic World. Uh, Return to Jurassic Park, which I started that one too. That's kind of cool. It's, it's kind of like a what if from the first movie. Like, okay, you, you've come back okay. to the island, you know, and it's got the real actors Sam Neill and Laura Dern. Really? And, and yeah, Jeff Goldblum. Wow. So they did a really good job with it. It's really fun. And Does it, did they it's keep not, adding more dinosaurs? Uh, they've got some dinosaur packs, <laughs> <laughs> obviously. You know, they've got, you know, that you can get, and there's like, I think it's like 15 bucks for. All of them, like okay. The whole pass, right. you know. But if you're getting the game for free, yeah, you can throw yeah, that on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think for like thirty or forty bucks, you can okay. get all the DLC. So it, it's not too bad of a deal. Okay. And I've had a really good time with it, okay. and I'm gonna finish it. Nice today. Today, oh, maybe. Whoa. whoa, maybe not. Whoa, probably not. <laughs> Play anything else? So a little it? bit of Red Dead yeah. here and there. So and I'm up to like I'm all of, almost at fifty days running Jeez, with my daily. I've got like 75 gold bars now, and I haven't done, you know what I mean? I'm just from playing. Yep. You, you can do it with, just with dailies alone. You should be able to get, if you do them all, I think it's 19 every day. So uh -huh. that's 
Yeah, well, that, that's great. Yeah, but that's like nine and a half bars a day. Yeah, that's, you know? that's what I mean. It's you can so gold bars. If you're not familiar and read that online, are like real currency. You can mm-hmm. buy it with real money, but you can earn it in game. And I'm, I'm just earning a ton just yep. from playing. And I don't even play that long. I'm talking about half an hour a day, maybe. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I didn't realize I have like twenty treasure maps. Never used one. Jesus. So I start doing those, and it's like you get, you get like, gold. Yeah, yeah, you get like a bar and a half plus. You get in-game money too, which is fantastic. Yeah. So um, no, I've still been still been enjoying that. I stop every like four and a half minutes and take a picture because that game's so damn beautiful. Um, but I did start yeah. playing uh, some cool Game Pass editions this week. Um, I wanted to mention so three big ones really: Children of Morta, which is an ARPG. So it's like a pixelated ARPG. So if you like, you know, you're, we always say Diablo. It's just the classic ARPG. But if you like that style of game with, like, their isometric battles and loot and stuff, um, that's out. I started playing that. I really like it so far. It's got a really neat art style. And um, so shout out to uh, Double Black Raven. He uh, turned me on to that. I wanted to try it anyway, um, but we were talking about it and uh, went and downloaded and started playing that. And that's really cool. Nice. But then um, Plague Tale also got nice. added to Game Pass. So if you haven't played that yet, Play it. Uh, Dan reviewed it, I believe, for the site. You can, awesome. if for some reason you haven't heard about that game and want to learn more, learn more about it. That review's on our site. And Greece was added too. Is that on PC? Yes. Or, okay. It's cool. PC, which nice. is which is fine. I'll play it on PC. Yeah. Um, but really, really cool because those are those are games we've been talking about. Like you should play, right? Yeah. I haven't played Greece. I, I reviewed that too. Yeah, yeah. That, that's right. Yeah, that review's up there as well. So uh, some good. really good additions. But uh, started with Children of Morta, so I'm going to play that for a bit. And uh, I play Greece as well soon, so pretty cool. Greece. So, anyway, um, I think that's going to close us out for the most part. We've got uh, kind of a lot going on. So I released two videos this week. One is uh, just me chatting, one of my industry perspective videos on PlayStation, really about some of the stuff we talked about today. Not going to E3, what it means for fans, what's going on with PlayStation, uh, executive shakeup, um, kind of what's been going on with them for the last year and a half or so. So check that out if uh, you want a little bit of insight. And then I also got my Yennefer statue this week. I didn't even show you. It's sitting over there. I'll show you. But Yennefer statue from Sideshow. So Prime One Studio statue. Did the unboxing of that right here, actually. And um, I've done Geralt, Triss, and now Yennefer. And Siri is supposed to be here. It's it's been delayed like it's a CD Projekt Red game. Oh, no. no. Oh, no. Uh, But it's been delayed like four times, so I don't know when that's actually coming, hopefully soon. And then uh, I got notice from Dark Horse that the, um, I think it's like 18 inches, like this big Leshen is coming next week. I ordered that like six months ago. Nice. So that's supposed to be really, really cool, too, so you'll see that as well. Um, So anyway, uh, if you're a new subscriber, you've probably already seen those, but uh, if you're just hanging out, check out those videos. I would appreciate it. And then uh, doing some traveling again this week, but I've got an article I've already been working on talking about the um, most underappreciated games of the generation. So got some favorites on there that uh, I know Dan will appreciate, <coughs> Sunset Overdrive, no. and <laughs> but some other games as well. So are kind of working on that. I should have that up this week too. Appreciate that if you check it out. Um, anything you want to mention before we get yeah. out of here? Good go, man. All good. All right. Well, thanks as always, guys. Really appreciate you tuning in. That was Big Cast eighty nine.